excited to have a special guest. Her name is Debbie Diener, and she came all the way from Oklahoma, Arkansas. <laughs> She's from Arkansas. I just kept saying Oklahoma because they were the same. <laughs> there you go. And I don't know where either of them are, so. You are geographically challenged. I know. I'm good at other things. Like what? Um, Needle felting? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hi, Milo. How are you? I am fabulous. I'm you so... are fabulous, too. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yes. So, um, Milo, did you find out any fun facts about gnomes? We're going to get right to it because we, you know, we can, we can do these gnomes in two videos, I think. Yes. But did you want to tell us anything exciting about gnomes? I, I have some jokes. No, oh. no fun facts. No fun facts. Well, there's a lot of... Dirty gnome facts out there. Oh. <laughs> Don't Google. It's not good. <laughs> um, Google really gets you nowhere. Well, no. it gets you all to the same place eventually. That's well, the, that's the thing. Don't do it, people. Uh, first thing, what is that gnome trying to prove? <laughs> just, just asking. He, he's, he's compensating for his small nose. Yeah, you can say. <laughs> okay. We're starting with one joke. Okay. What do you call a gnome from a large city? Um, wow. I don't know. Got it? No. Nothing? Nothing. A metro gnome. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yep, we're ready to roll. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, so this is a great beast. This is a great beginner project. Um, if you haven't seen any of our videos, we have a series of instructional videos that just talk about different fibers and how to get started. Um, and this time around, we're not gonna do a supply pack. We're gonna give you a list of things that you could use and that you might need, but because there's just so many possibilities, I didn't wanna limit anyone with a supply pack. Um, but it's a very simple little project and it's a great way to either learn needle felting or, um, if you're a seasoned needle felter, accomplish something really fun in a short amount of time. Why are you looking at me like that? Nice hat. Thank you. Would where's you like, you where's try, mine? You want to try it on? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Perfect. Ooh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> am, I, am I eating it? <laughs> it's, it's eating you. Let's okay. See. Let's give you a little more of like a, there we go. Don't, don't call all at once, ladies. <laughs> all right, we should get to it. Yep. Okay. So we um, are going to build a basic shape on a skewer. And if you don't have a skewer, you could use a chopstick, maybe the handle of a wooden spoon or something mm -hmm. that you have in your kitchen. And... Um, we're going to do that with core wool, and depending on whether you're going to make the body show or not, or completely cover it in curls, you might want to pick a core, core wool that coordinates with the hat somewhat, either a neutral color or, here, move in here, Debbie, and show the red. Debbie's going to make a red hat, so she's using um, a red core wool. core wool. That's our nearly red, mostly red, <laughs> almost red. There's so many, so many names. Um, didn't come out quite as red as we wanted it, but it's actually a really useful core color. And I'm going to use gray, and I like to break off about, work with about a 12 inch piece, and then um, split it in half lengthwise, and just build from there. Um, Debbie's jumping right in. She's just, she's trying to get a jump start on me. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so, what I do is I determine how long I want the gnome to be and then start wrapping from the bottom and I go up to the top and I usually come back down. So, yeah. So up to the top and then come back down and then I'll fill this part in as well right. to be a little fuller. And then to make the hat tapered, um, I just sort of the second time don't wrap quite as far up so that it stays pointy on the top. So for those of you 
who are just learning to needle felt, when you wrap your skewer or your armature or whatever you're making, you want to pull pretty tightly because then you have less stabbing to do. And I keep the roving flat like it's a ribbon. And now I'm turning around and I'm going back down. How's that look, Milo, on the video? Good. Good. Um, I hear trucks. I might bark. Oh. I, I'll try to contain myself, but... <laughs> Who's here? Who's here? UPS. So, um, so anyway, it's nice and smooth. And then my next piece, I won't go up quite as far. So that starts to build that um, cone or, or triangular shape. So I'll stop about there. Maybe go a little bit farther. And then turn around and go down. And then I usually make um, their body a little wider than their hat. So I'm going to do one more piece. Let me just stab that so I can take my hands away. You want to show yours, Daddy? Sure. So here's where I tapered up to the top and then wrapped some additional here. And then when you're ready to take it off of your skewer, you can just push it right up to the top and it comes off. And then you can stab into the bottom of the base or the body of the gnome oh, to cute. try and flatten it. Oh, we didn't stop filming? No, no, we did not, but we'll edit. Did you get the, the cute UPS man? I did not get him. <laughs> did you get my excitement over A my... little bit. <laughs> Watch it, I might I tell think Dave. She did. I think she oh, did. shoot. That's all right. If you keep your thumb and finger kind of up in your gnome's privates, <laughs> I might have a joke about that. That's all if the you, jokes that are out there. If you wrap sort of around your thumb and finger, then it, it makes a nice little, oh, I'm getting too close now, dip so that it keeps your base really flat. Right. And um, just helps. Helps him to give, stand. Helps them to stand up because sometimes they can be a little tippy, especially when they have gigantic hats. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to take this one up all the way up and make his hat a little bit longer, like that. So generally, you're making a big cone. And now I'm going to stab into the bottom to help flatten that out. And you can even make a little round pancake piece that you put on the bottom um, just to give him more even more stability. So most of these gnomes that we have here, just to give you an idea of what you might need, weigh between um, about a third of an ounce and a half of an ounce. So with an ounce, we usually sell most of our core wool in two ounce bundles. But even with an ounce of core wool, you've got four, three or four gnomes at least. So that's my base. How's your base coming, Debbie? Mine's good. My, now, if you notice, my hat's a little bit on the loose side a little bit here. So one thing you can do to help it is once you get the shape going and you've got some needling, you can roll it in the palm of your hands to kind of help felt it in a little better. That's how this one, be careful. <laughs> because that's how this one got so long. I rolled it in my hand. And it kept getting longer. And it just... Kept getting, kept getting longer. But you can see it made it a little bit firmer. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> People don't Google. <laughs> don't Google gnomes. Don't <clears throat> Google hand working gnome hats. It's not good. <laughs> Just watch the video and take, take our word for it. You're taking this out of GP here. I know. Okay. So my... There is, there is method to the madness. 
Um, here, let me show you my plan, and then Debbie can show you her plan. My plan is a teal hat, and then these are, I'm going to show you a couple different um, wool options. This is called Lester Long Wool. We have this right now in gray and white in our shop. The white's called Santa Beard because it's absolutely um, beautiful and perfect for Santa Beards. But I'm going to do gray on this guy. And... I'm not going to do a body. I'm going to, his whole, his whole little self is going to have curls. So these are something like a, um, a little Cotswold or Wensleydale curl. Something sort of like this. Small little white curl. Um, this one is made with Surrey alpaca. I happen to have some really, really long Surrey. So he, um, he got long braids, and that we have in lots of colors. So that comes in black, brown, blonde. Here's some brown. So that's Surrey. And, and his hat was made with the pretty locks. His hat is made with dyed um, mohair. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you want to show the um, sure. the beard that you your plan? Um, it is mohair. Comes from a goat. Okay. I'm using the off-white mohair beard. I'm doing a red hat. And I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to wrap my body, and so I'm going to do a blue body. So I'm going to have kind of the traditional gnome colors. So some other things that you might need besides your top coat is a little bit of a flesh tone for the nose. I'm going to make mine with ears um, so you can see the difference, like this guy has no ears, and this guy has ears. yeah, okay, you can grab another this one. Guy has ears this guy also. has little ears. This guy has ears also, kind of poking out under his cap. What is that beard? This is the high luster white, high luster white. It's really straight, um, and it's long, so that's kind of fun. What else do we have to show? If you get a little bit of a specialty, oh, I love that one locks. This is a really long Wensleydale. So I made his hat kind of like crooked because he's been around for a long time. So his hat's wearing out. I'm going to just keep showing you gnomes because right. there's so many possibilities. This is a dyed uh, Wensleydale that we dyed. And then um, I wrapped a mohair lock around his hat and I put a little pine cone at the top. So, oh my gosh, there's so much you could do with embellishments, little pieces of leather. Um, when Lee was here, she made this guy. This is um, Gotland locks. This is Gotland locks or mohair. I think this might be Gotland. And then she put um, a wide brim and a leather trim and a little feather. So just, you know, right. go crazy with it. And this one has the straight Surrey alpaca for the beard and the mustache, and then a little curl coming out of the top of the hat. So I'd say the next step would be to get some of your hat color um, towards the top. Because the way mm -hmm. that we do the hat brims, um, you kind of make this brim and the fringe shoots up. And depending on how much fringe you have, it might not go all the way to the top. Right. So. For mine, I'm actually going to do this technique of a little bit of curls on the top. And to do that, I'm going to take, before I put my um, teal top coat on, I'm going to pick out some nice little mohair teal curls and just get them kind of sticking out of the top here the way that I want them. You doing anything like that on your? I'm not going to do curls on the top of mine. Okay. I'm going to do just the regular pointed cap. Okay. But I'm still going to go ahead and put some... Some red at the top? At the very okay. top. I'm right. Because I've ran into what you said where you uh, you felt it and put it on and it's not quite not tall quite enough tall to go enough. to the right. top of the cap. Yeah. And it's easier to do it this way than to try to fix it after. Thanks for coming all this way, oh, Debbie. I'm having so much fun. Thank you for having me.
we um, at Serafina had planned to do a gnome, a little pocket gnome, we were going to call them, tutorial. And in the meantime, Debbie just started <laughs> making gnomes. And everybody was going crazy. And we're like, wait! So then we thought, let's join them. So we invited Debbie out to help us make the video. All right, so I just put a little bit of teal. I'm going to let you show because I okay. got to work on this in front of What me. I did is I just felted some of the um, some of the red that I'm using for the cap. Just get it felted together. And then I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it. I'm not going to wrap it. I'm sorry. I'm going to do it this way because I want it to be a little bit... Fringy on the top. Fringy on the top. All right. I was wondering why you felt right. it first if you were wrapping it. Right. So then I'm just going to poke it on. Okay. So before we finish our hats, we need to do our nose. Um, or ear and or ears and your curls because your hat needs to come over all of that. So you don't want to put the brim of your hat on and then be trying to shove details and curls up underneath. Right. So um, in in the process, I like to um, do that nose and ears next, wouldn't you say? Yes. So are you ready? Oh, you're going to put some blue I'm on the I'm going to put some blue on the body. So I'm going to put the blue on the body. I'm just going to wrap it and then felt it. Then I'm going to go on to what Sarah was saying uh, with the nose. Okay. So I'm just going to felt this on. So generally with the gnomes, I keep the nose really simple. I don't like sculpt, you know, up. Roman sculpture type nose or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just make a little um, seed on a toothpick I'm going to show you. And I either put it sideways like this one um, or I put it straight up and down so that it's like a longer, longer little nose. It's a little shadowy. Let me see. Let me wrap one in. All I do is I just wrap a thin amount of flesh tone around a toothpick. And if you're making a bigger nose, you use more. If you're making a little nose, <laughs> you use less. I'm going to make kind of a bigger nose because this gray um, wool is so voluminous. I want his nose to be able to right. show. So I just slide that off and pick what's going to be front and stick it on. And like I said, this one I'm going um, just straight up and down. And I'm going to really, that's not my real sticky needle, stick it on at the top and then under the nose just kind of carefully poke it back in this way. So it's like that. And I'm going to make my nose the, um, the way you show us. In to make hand. the seed, uh huh, where you uh, roll the ball in your hand. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've been using the toothpick more and more because I have more control. It, I've over noticed it. that you get a little nicer shape yeah. that way. Yeah. Yes. Here, sometimes you can get some little bumps and stuff, but I can uh, typically I can felt those out. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of gives you two options. And to make an ear, I just take little squares of my flesh tone. And I want my ear to be more flat than the nose, so I'm going to do it by felting a shape on the surface rather than wrapping it around a skewer. And um, I kind of draw a line in the center, and then you can almost just draw the shape not almost, you can draw the shape that you want your ear to be and then just fold the wool in along that shape. I'm kind of making like a pointy, a pointy ear. 
Do we have our punch tool out by any chance? I don't think so. All right, well, quick, do something interesting. In, I'll go grab the punch this tool. Is the, in this is thing. my okay. nose. Mine ended up being a little bit more of like a button nose. Uh, did you go sideways with it? I didn't, actually. Okay. But when I was uh, softening the point of it, the tip of it, it, uh, it rounded up a little bit. So we've got a little... Because that got, was one... Um, Option was to put your nose, yeah, sideways. Right. More of a button nose. Mine, this one's more of a ball button nose. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's yeah. cute. Yeah, that's really cute. So, I'm not going to do ears, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding my locks. So this noise you're hearing is this punch tool, which is really great for felting flat things. So before I put the ear on, I actually, I'll make the other one because I want to make sure that I make them both the same. Um, sometimes you put something on and you forget what it looked like or how you did it. So it's best to make both at the same time. You're very quiet, Milo. Uh, I'm working back here. You're not napping? I'm not napping. I'm okay. zooming. Okay. You're zooming. I'm wow. zooming. I have your fingertips. Trying to get detail for people. I do have a joke, though. Okay. What do you call a gnome who never settles in one place? A nomad? Yes, it's very easy. Oh. You got it. A nomad. <laughs> Don't you feel successful? You got a joke. I know. I feel very intelligent. While we were on vacation, my sister was reading vocabulary vocabulary words. Oh, and I was going to remember them, and I was going to use them. Oh my gosh! But I forgot them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so his ears. I like to put the t the crook of his ear at the same level of the nose because that's where the hat brim is going to go. There is, there is some thought yes, to this. There is. There is. Um, but the fringe of the ear is going to get totally covered by um, curls. So it doesn't matter that that's like attached like that. And then I'll put the other one and I'll try to do it evenly. You I love the ears. ears. I love the ears. So when I start adding the hair, I start on one side of the nose. I, I kind of pick the locks I like the best to be in the front. And I start on one side of the nose, and then I do the other side of the nose so that I make sure I get the nice locks. And then I continue around with it, and then I do the beard under the nose at the last. So this is my first, um, my first little piece of locks for the hair here, the nice little wavy. This is really pretty. And I'm going to show how, um, if you want to fold it over, how oh, that works. Right. Yeah. Because that's, sometimes when you have a really long lock, yes. that's the way you want to do it. So these are pretty long. If I put them that way, they would be very long. So instead, I'm going to use the folding over technique. That's what, that's the official that's right. word. So I take the cut end of the lock and I put it on the bottom. And then I'm going to needle felt it here and let this fold over. So that now I've got about half the length of the lock with the prettier side on top. That also adds a little more fullness to it, yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. And for those of you who aren't as familiar with working with locks or this is all new, when you have a pile of locks, it's important to find the pretty end or the, it's usually real tapered and hold your locks there and pull them apart from there. Whoa, this, look how long that is, I didn't realize. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that long. Wait, let me find something else to demonstrate with. Okay, for example, here's the gray that I'm using. <clears throat> I'm gonna find the end of a curl and pull from there. And that preserves the lock structure as opposed to just taking it and going like this and hoping to see a curl because you're just going to frizz it all out. Right. So find the end of the curl and pull from there. 
Okay. Awkward empty stab at moments. This is this is making me think of Rapunzel almost yeah. with this waviness going yeah, on here. Yeah, that is really pretty. All right, so I put this down. I want to go just above where I think the brim of the hat is going to settle so that the brim of the hat not only covers the top of the locks, but helps hold it on, actually. Right. And we're making our gnomes with, like, no cheeks, no eyes. We are just, like, they are just covered in... Beardage. <laughs> when I did um, when I did one of the gnomes with the alpaca um, beard, I actually used a woodle around here to attach oh, it. right to attach the yeah. fiber and then made sure the cap went down over the woodle. So what Debbie's saying is, you take your lock. Let me find one. Milo, you didn't pre-separate out all my locks. Uh, I, that is not part of my job description. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, wait, wait, wait. When you work somewhere, Milo, everything is everybody's Oh, tell job. me about it. I know. <laughs> Trust me. Milo does a lot. I know Milo does. <laughs> so I'm just giving Milo so I job. stab across. And then you can use a woodle or a little, um, a little piece of core wool mm -hmm. and just put it across where you stabbed. And that really helps hold down. And what Debbie was saying with the Surrey, it's really slippery. So with things like the alpaca and maybe even the mohair, um, you might want to, to use that extra little piece of wool in there to help hold it right. down. Yeah, locks it so on. I'm putting hair on his back. I'm going to put a second layer under here because I don't want him to be totally, oh, cute. you know, totally bald there. You mm -hmm. want to show what's going on on your sure. of the woods? I'm still adding the, um, the curls, the locks around. And what I do with the longer part is I just kind of taper it up. I don't, mine aren't so long that I need to double them. So I kind of taper them up and then the cap will we'll cover them as uh, as you add the cap wool. You know what else you can do? What's that, that? I like to do. I'll show you in one second. I thought of it before I had the hands to do it. Um, and maybe we'll stop after we get this hair on mm -hmm. and then do noses and hat details Okay. in a second video. Since we're making these real time. Another thing you can do once you have your front hair on and your back hair on is take a lock. If you have an ear, actually, you don't have an ear, so this is not for you. Um, but if you have an ear, is take one lock and just put it over the ear, like oh, that. Oh, cute! And that just Brings it all together. Right. You know what I mean? You don't have a bald spot anywhere. Right. Um, connects the front and the back. Because otherwise you risk sort of having this mm -hmm. bald spot here. I usually put the prettier end of the lock towards the front of the gnome. Right, and I try to do that as well. Yeah. So, um, how are we doing on time, Milo? We are probably over 30 minutes now. All right, let's stop. So what I'm going to do next is put a lip before I do my beard and my mustache. Um, but yeah, but we'll, um, we'll pick back up in the next video right, right where we left off. Great. Okay.